When I was a young child, I didn't know I had complete androgen insensitivity syndrome, nor did my parents. Here's a picture of us. We look cute. Oh, that's me. Um, gosh, I look really cute there, don't I? Um, we didn't find out that I had complete androgen insensitivity syndrome until I was about 13 or 14 years old and I had abdominal pain. My parents were told that I had um, CA, CAIS, but I was not. Um, years later, I went ahead and had surgery to remove the internal undescended testes. I was not told what the, they were actually removing, but rather I was told I had cancer. Flash forward, I obtained my own medical records and I saw that I had CAIS, which meant I had XY sex chromosomes. I was pretty shocked. I sort of look like this. So, um, yeah, I was nervous about it. I forgot my records. I threw them in the dumpster. I didn't want to ever talk about it. But then a few years later, I was sitting in a doctoral feminist sociology class reading some really cool stuff by some really cool people. And I thought, um, wow, I'm really interested in this. I was like, here I was, throwing my records in the dumpster. I didn't want to ever talk about it. So um, I thought, you know what? Let's crawl out of that dumpster and let's think how I can bridge my personal um, connection to the topic and my professional interest. And that's what I did. So I first told um, my uh, mentor at the doctoral level. Here she is. Um, ignore my hairstyle. I really didn't care for her too much then. And she warned me. She said, you know, Georgianne, if you study this, um, it's going to be public knowledge. Are you okay with that? And I was like, huh? So I decided to test the waters and write a paper in that class about intersex conditions. And when I shared it first with my graduate school friends, here are my graduate school friends. They were all super supportive. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this. And that's what I did. So I started studying it. And you know what? It was incredibly liberating. Um, anyhow, you're not alone, OK? And if you're feeling uh, abnormal, if you're feeling like you don't fit in, that's OK. I think a lot of people feel that way about a, about a variety of different things. And I've been there. Now look, years later, I'm sitting as an assistant professor of sociology in the state university. I don't have this yet. But I hope to soon. I forgot the most, one of the most important things that I should have remembered. Oh, what's wrong with me? This is my French bulldog, Penny, sometimes referred to as Booba Schnookles. So you're not alone. You have me. You have Booba Schnookles. And I'm sure you have a lot of other supportive people in your life, too, as I did. So uh, I wish you the best. Contact me if you need to. And remember, nobody is shameful.